I just got off of a live answering these two questions and now I'm doing the regular video so that you can go back and see it and I can also add some pictures of my meal prep this morning and some links and some other information. The question was, how do you, so the gal who asked me, so I'm gonna be 60 very soon and I'm 5'1", and the gal who asked the question, she weighs a little bit less than me, she's 5'1", uh, but she's gonna be closer to 65. Um, I have a significant amount of muscle. I also carry my weight between my knee and my hip. So I tend to be you know, comfortable carrying a little bit more weight, which is lucky because it's like, it's not, it's not around my ribs. It's not really anywhere that it's a problem. You know, it's kind of in places that I can cover it with a skirt. But I totally understand wanting to lose the last five or 10 pounds because it is why I went back to carnivore really committed about a year ago. And it's why I went clean carnivore very recently. So the two things, go clean carnivore. I think she probably already is. But the second thing is to do progressive strength training. There's good evidence, I mean really great studies that I've seen and I've lived the proof that weight training improves insulin sensitivity, it improves uh, metab metabolic health, mitochondria, ATP, it just straight down the line. Uh, it really is the thing that turns you into a lean machine and makes it possible for you to lose those last few pounds. But the first step, of course, is clean carnivore. I do want to talk about that for a little bit. I uh, wrote down everything I ate and I did the, uh, the calorie breakdown just because I was curious. I used to be a personal trainer and we, we used to be much more interested in calories. And it, it turns out that even when I'm adding, eating ad litem, ad libitum, you know, eating pretty much as much as I want of the clean carnivore, which for me is uh, beef, eggs, bacon, a little bit of butter, a little bit of heavy cream in my coffee. And I gotta be honest with you guys because what good is it if I'm not, I do have some stevia in my coffee in the morning and then I do have some tajava or uh, celestial se seasonings, just plain herbal tea uh, in the afternoon. Otherwise I'm having water. I did the math on it and I'm having like up to, I wanna say that I'm having up to 10 ounces of beef a day. It may not be that much, it might be more like eight. Eating as much beef as I want with you know some nice fat on it, eating like five eggs, five strips of bacon, only at like 1,350 calories. If I really push it, I go up to 1,450. And with as active as I am, I'm like, well, no wonder I'm losing weight on clean carnivore. It just naturally brings energy balance. I'm getting plenty of protein. I'm getting plenty of fat for energy, I'm getting all of the good nutrients from the egg, egg yolks and the beef, and, uh, and I'm getting enough pleasure by having the bacon. All of the bases are covered. I had my last meal at 1.30, it's 6.15, and I am not hungry. So clean carnivore, that's the thing, plenty of water. When my clients' weight loss would stall, very often the first thing they were giving up was, was staying hydrated. At my website, katherinetraining.com, I put up a blog post. I'll make it sticky so it goes farther up in the feed. You have to kind of scroll down to see it. The blog post is called How to Progress Your Strength Training for Weight Loss. I'll add a link in the description. And just briefly, because you can go and read about it there, it has the three steps that I do. My first training protocol is for the first month and I call it the nine. Nine exercises, non-competing exercises, start going uh, upper body, lower body, upper body, lower body. One set of each exercise, just one, takes about 20 minutes for the entire training routine, but you do go to momentary form failure. You do as many reps as you can do with excellent form and then you put the weight down nine lifts and you're going to do that for twice a week three times a week if you want to for at least four weeks after four weeks if you want to progress to a different style of training you move on to the non-competing supersets three non-competing supersets and that would be so you'd have like a push-up and a squat you do eight of each rest recover and then go back and repeat that two more times so three rounds of each superset. And so it's upper, lower, upper, lower, upper, lower, and three times a week, and then do that for four more weeks. And then you could stick with that, or you could progress to a five-day split, 
And I have a five day split that I designed with dumbbells. I have one on that website, katherinetraining.com. And it starts with, it begins with leg day, chest, leg day, chest day, back day, then shoulders, and then arms. And the lifts are listed there. Four or three, usually four, different exercises for each part of the body done on the different days. And th that is multiple sets. Is that five day split, that really is, you know, your ultimate aspirational, you know, bodybuilding type split to really get, you know, the super results that you want. And this would really call it that aspirational body, really leaning out, you know, having the visible muscle definition. That's the most important thing. I would say just make sure it's clean carnivore so you're, that you're nourished and completely satisfied. You're never experiencing hunger pangs or cravings. If you do, have a little beef because if you're not hungry for steak, you're not really hungry. Yeah, get satisfied, nourished and satisfied with carnivore and then go for the nine, then the non-competing supersets, and then the five day splits if you really want to progress to the ultimate then the other question I'm answering today is about managing gum disease with carnivore. I had already experienced terrible gum disease and tooth loss. The dentist was feeling like two more teeth were going to have to come out before I started carnivore. But then I started carnivore and the teeth stabilized. Not too long ago they found out that this molar was a little bit loose. That's when I went clean carnivore. I use tooth soap. It's just a little drops of like a little liquid soap, very pure liquid soap. Put it on a proxa brush to clean out the pockets and um, i have not lost any more teeth this molar has stabilized other premolar has stabilized and i just have to i use this i try to use it before bed i sometimes use it in the morning but this really cleans out those pockets carnivore amazing getting rid of the systemic inflammation uh, really helping my gums to heal by not continuing to inflame and irritate them the tooth soap to really get things clean. And I just want to finish with something I noticed this week as I was gardening. Uh, we don't use Roundup. We get weeds, you know, we leave dandelions for the bumblebees. We leave, we use the miner's lettuce for our chickens. So we're careful. We do a lot of hand pulling with uh, some of our weed beds. And I wasn't wearing gloves. And first I got myself with a rose thorn and then I got myself poked with a weed. And it was so interesting because you could immediately feel that it was a toxin, that it was a poison. Definitely the rose poke. There was nothing in there, but my finger was still acting like it was like, ah, I've been poisoned. And then on my other hand, uh, the poke from a, a spiky weed, some of them have like a milky substance and immediately, you know, Maybe they were fine, but a minute they like break the skin or you have any, you know, permeables or any leaky gut or anything like that. I'm like, oh my goodness. I mean, just from pulling a single weed and just getting a slight poke in my skin, really feeling that toxic inflamed reaction. And I'm not saying that everybody has that, you know, certainly the, 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 the cows and the chickens and the, the goats and the sheep, they all have no problem eating all that stuff. The horses, the deer, they all know what to eat and what to avoid. There's a lot of things that they avoid too. But it was really interesting that if you break the skin, all of a sudden that friendly plant becomes quite, quite toxic and quite irritating once it gets into any contact with your bloodstream. So that is my carnivore report for today on losing those pounds. Go clean, lift those weights. For gum disease, get clean, eat carnivore. And then if you need to, you can also add tooth soap don't get this on your tongue. It is soap. It's, you know, like washing your mouth out with soap if you get it on your tongue. Until next time, be well, eat for yourself, and I really like answering your questions.